I'm told uh, when you plant cassava, even along the boundaries, boundaries of the, uh, the rubber plantation, it becomes bitter. You can't use it. So I don't think you can plant any other food crop in a, in a, a rubber plantation, no. That is the challenge that Isikasu, a small farming community in the eastern region, is facing now. Food insecurity as cocoa fields are destroyed to make way for rubber plantations. This community is inhabited by farmers, more than 10,000 of them. Over the last one year, cocoa output from the community has dropped by more than 50%. This followed the destruction of thousands of acres of cocoa farm fields to make way for the planting of rubber trees. Sisi, I would do any bubu as I see as I see a mojuri atu was a sea, a mojuri as I see getting to 2000 2000 plus hectares. More than 2000 hectares of farmlands have been destroyed. Half of that was cocoa. About 1000 farmers have been victims of this destruction. I walk through some of the vast fields in the bushes of Esikasu. What I see are uprooted cocoa trees. I see the pots hanging lowly on them on the ground. I walk on tree stumps and leaves of the uprooted cocoa trees. No, no, Esikasu tree can be found over there or are demolished from the, from the land. What has been demolished? The cocoa farms have been devolved, demolished from the farm, from all the farms. And they have planted a new rubber plantation over there. So when you go there, you see only rubber plantation. You see nothing but rubber plantation. I meet frail-looking 63-year-old Daute lying on plantain leaves somewhere in the deep bushes there. His five-acre cocoa farm on which he had grown other crops as well for the last 30 years was destroyed in the year 2017, leaving him with no property to hand over to his children and grandchildren. As Secretary of the Cocoa Farmers Association explains, Plants are underway to cut down a lot more cocoa trees in the area. The Ghana Rubber Estate Limited Grill has acquired thousands of acres of land around here from a disputed chief in the area for the rubber plantations, majority of which are cocoa lands. Some uh, rubber companies who um, have come uh, to acquire a land over here, all the land around us, they say they have bought it from the chiefs. So they are destroying all cocoa farms and any other product on the land. Um, plantain, uh, coconut, uh, orange, and everything on the land they are destroying, including our foodstuffs, uh, maize and cassava and anything on the land they are destroying. Usually, because cocoa trees yield pods seasonally, farmers would plant food crops between their fields. They rely on this to feed their families until the cocoa harvest season is due. Growing rubber on the field will not allow the farmers to plant food crops in between because it sucks virtually all the nutrients in the soil and also because of the pungent smell it emits during harvest. As a result of this, Chief of Esikasu, Berima Kwabna Tando, says the community is struggling to feed itself. <laughs> Now there is hunger in Asikasu. The destruction of the cocoa trees also led to the destruction of food crops. This farmer puts the food insecurity problem into perspective. At first, when you buy cassava two CDs, you and your family will be satisfied. But now, you'd spend more than 10 CDs before you'll be okay. They destroyed cocoa, palm oil, coconut, plantain, and other crops. A lot of children in this community have dropped out of school following the destruction of cocoa fields. This is because they can no longer benefit from cocoa scholarship schemes following the destruction of farms. The Secretary of the Cocoa Farmers Association says the rubber plantations will not benefit the community as much as they benefited from cocoa.
more poverty because already <laughs> farming is a very hard occupation. And if you are able to make your farm for so many years and one day the grader and all these machines will come and destroy it, you know that you don't have a future. The future here, even the youth especially, they take much interest in cuckoo farm around two or some years ago. But those young farms all are being destroyed and it's very pathetic and they don't like it. It's only that we don't have help. We, are, we, we, we want help us so that we can set, the settlement here can be very good for us. He is pleading with Grell to stop further destruction of cocoa trees. Yeah. Cocoa is, we prefer the cocoa. The one thing is that this company, rubber company, they are not giving the, even the rubber to the farmers to plant themselves. They, the, 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 the company belongs to them and the, whatever they get is for them. So we don't get, it's our, the cocoa and the other um, cassava and the, um, plantain, those things, they are, for, they are for, the, for the community. But as for the rubber, it's the, the company who is benefiting from it. We don't get anything. They employ laborers and give them cheap money. They say, uh, the payment even is not. People are complaining. It's only that we, they don't know what to do. There are more stories of such destruction all around. The vast land you see in the background stretching more than a thousand acres at the Siam in the Ayensu North District have been taken over to make way for rubber plantations. Abena Adobia is a farmer here. Nasasi <laughs> is They've seized the land from us without compensation and destroyed the cocoa. So we are suffering. We want our lands back. 2015 to whom municipal best farmer Said Mahama says traditional leaders here do not have the community at heart. He says they have caused an economic downturn with the destruction of the cocoa trees. How are the Abre and the Bebre? We have been using money from cocoa and plantain to educate our children. Now they have been destroyed. Where can we get food? Unless there is a serious intervention from government, more fields will be destroyed. Once they finish destroying what is here, they will extend it to other areas. That should not happen. But the takeover was not smooth. The residents resisted, resulting in the injuring of one person. A businesswoman who led the takeover went into the community with armed guards. It was expected to be a hostile meeting because the residents had earlier protested and it eventually turned out to. When we met as a community, we insisted we would not give the lands to them. They had land guards and they started shooting. One person was shot in the leg. 44-year-old Bismarck Nete is a palm wine tapper and father of eight children. September 17, 2016 was the worst day of his life. When the resident protested the takeover, he became the collateral damage. He was shot as he tried to escape the chaos. The bullet riddled through his feet. Unfortunately, due to poor treatment, the leg is getting rotten. They came to take the land. The community met them, but I wasn't there. Whilst approaching the meeting venue, I heard the gunshots. It hit my leg. I was taken on a motorbike to the Suhum police station. From there, I was given a form to go to the hospital. I was in the hospital for three days and spent four months in another facility afterwards. But to date, I'm not okay. He struggles to walk. His wife has divorced him and now he struggles to take care of his children. Bismarck lives in this mud structure. He is unable to properly treat his feet using old rags to tie it up instead of treated bandages. I want justice. The man who shot me needs to be dealt with. Now my wife has left me. 
on as the same usually. And now so you why they are jammy. I say me you may be a it way to twelve me them. There is a general sense that cocoa production is not profitable enough, hence the decision by chiefs to rather turn the land over to rubber plantation companies. Cocoa Board holds on to up to 30% of the amount it earns from selling cocoa on the international market with the promise to provide necessary inputs to farmers for free. But these farmers say the support has not been forthcoming. Somehow, when it's not up to satisfaction, because for the mass spraying, uh, we used to spray the cocoa about uh, three or four times, and in some times you can get only one for the whole year. You see, for the farmers, you know our problem is uh, so every every time and every farmers have uh, more problems. So you, you don't have enough money to, to buy all the equipment that you may need to use in your farms. The lamentations of the cocoa farmers continue. Michael Appenton grows 15 acres of cocoa at Chifohemang in the central region. Last year, it, it came, but it wasn't sufficient. Only I can say that even in Himai town here, only about 5% got the fertilizer. Did you get some yourself? No. I went to the... Uh, market to buy some myself. Okay. How much does it cost? It costs 80 Ghana cities per one. Okay. For you, is that fair? Is, is that fair that... Oh, no. At least, at least, it's about, say, 40 Ghana or 30 Ghana. Every farmer can buy some. Because the more you apply the fertilizer, the more your cocoa yield to come. The story is same at Sukrong, another farming community in the eastern region where rubber plantations have replaced cocoa farms. The way the rubber trees are close to us, it is worrying. It has brought snakes to our homes. I don't want it here. It has affected our community. So in several parts of the central, western and eastern region, Rubber plantations continue to expand. In my area, the Himai Lower Dentra area, is one area that the lands are so fertile for the growth and maintenance of the cocoa crop. Unfortunately, in recent times, dating back, if I, if I, since I came in, about the last six or seven years, we've seen a, a creeping trend of people also interested in rubber plantation who have been to my area. In fact, I have met some farmers who have been approached by people who have formed some kind of cooperative around rubber plantation and have managed to convince some of our cocoa farmers and some of them are cutting down their trees and some of them are going into totally new production lands which otherwise could have been used for the cocoa plantation are now being uh, rechanneled to be used for rubber plantation and for me this is quite worrisome looking at the fact that revenue from cocoa to the nation is so significant and this is something we need to look at. The Chufu Lower Heman Dentra district in the central region is one of those areas where we are seeing a lot of the springing up when it comes to rubber plantations. What you see here in the background is a huge rubber plantation here in this particular district. This is a 30 acre rubber farm and the interesting bit is this, it belongs to only one person, one individual owns this huge tract of rubber trees that you find here. Ibrahim Sali, that's its name. Well, he's not the only one who is into the business. There are a number of others, and this area has largely been known when it comes to the production of oil palm and even cocoa. But since the year 1997, a lot more people have been venturing into this particular trade when it comes to the growing of rubber. You tap it. You've got to tap a knife. So you tap it from this place. Round. You see, there's a spout here. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. So when you tap it, when you reach it, then you stop. So it will be dropping, dropping for about three days. This one will be almost full. Then when you can, you take it, you pour it in a thing. You pour all. Then the next day you come that it has dried. Uh -huh. Then the, the, you gather it up. You make it bulk, 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 bulk. Then that station, that place is the station. Then the car will come and take it. Then they go and we. About how much do you earn from it? Maybe every year or every month? Every month. Roughly, let's take it. Okay, it, ha it hasn't grown to the extent it will come too much. So about 500 Ghana, 600 Ghana a month. Uh -huh. Deputy Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Bright Reku Brobe, is worried about how a lot of cocoa farmers have been lured into the thinking that their lives will be better off growing the rubber tree what I know the rubber plantation is doing now is they get the farmers, they let them put themselves into groups, they give them uh, the, the seedlings, and then uh, they also pay some amount of money as seed for the farmers to begin working on these. And that's what is not happening uh, in the cocoa industry. But quantifying the seedlings of the cocoa crop and all that, farmers should know that it is a kind of a buy incentive from the fact that they are part of the entire cocoa production process. And the process that comes, some of it is used in the production of seedlings and, and they're giving back to farmers who want to go into a cocoa farm. He is calling for increased education for all to appreciate the usefulness of the cocoa pod to help avert such destruction in future. If, if it's about incentive, if it's about money that are making people shift and so on, we should be able to uh, explain the extension agents of cocoa board should come up with awareness creation programs around the cocoa crop. So that farmers know that it is a sustainable crop which you can rely on and which can give you more money with the use of best practices in the industry. But there is a general downside to the story. It's a case of history repeating itself. Ibrahim Sali has a 30-acre rubber plantation at Chifo Heman in the western region. He destroyed all palm plantations on the land more than 50 years ago to make way for the rubber plantation. He is regretting it now. The rubber could have been profitable if we were getting good prices like those in Ivory Coast. But we are being cheated here in Ghana. His concerns are magnified by chairman of the Western Rubber Farmers Association, John Kobner. From Agona to Axim to Elubo, what we are seeing in the eastern region today, rubber plantations replacing cocoa trees, happened here 20 years ago. They were promised that rubber will help them wipe poverty from the communities. But the feeling of regret is all too real here. Year 95, and I agree. In 1995, Grell came to tell us government has asked them to bring us rubber trees. They said one acre of rubber was more profitable than 10 acres of cocoa. They told us everyone needs to grow rubber to wipe out poverty. So they made us cut down our cocoa, coconuts, oranges and cassava. So we stopped growing more foods to grow rubber. So we didn't have food to eat. But we endured because we were looking forward to a good future. That never came. He says in the mid-90s, these communities struggled as food prices hiked following the establishment of rubber plantations. Homes broke down as couples separated because of hardship. Mr. Kobna is actually considering cutting down the rubber trees to replant his cocoa. No food can be grown in the rubber plantations. 
and this has caused us a lot of problems at Agnaswidru. Food prices went up. Unfortunately, the expected good profit from rubber plantations didn't come either. In the Ashanti region, cocoa fields are equally under massive destructive pressures, mainly from the activities of illegal miners who continue to bring down cocoa and other farms with impunity using heavy machinery like excavators. These problems are most prevalent in the Ashanti Achim, Ejiso, and Amansia West district. Joseph Albert Kwam is MP for Manson Kwanta. You see, cocoa is the backbone of this nation. That is the, the, what is saving this economy, you see, our economy. But the situation is, all our cocoa farms are going. Year by year, we don't get the cocoa output target. And this is very serious. What is causing that? Illegal mining. Illegal Chinese miners are attacking us. The, the sudden of it is not only on the cocoa farms. The other side is the shoot and kill system. They are killing Ghanaians brazenly. I witnessed the level of destruction at a community near to home in the eastern region. Before this place, this place was coming like this, uh, we have cocoa farm here and also we have uh, vegetable farmers farm here. So uh, they just spoil it, just like that. They and what did they do to get the gold out which has ended up spoiling the land? They use excavator. They, they use excavator to dig the land. Sometimes go down about uh, 20 feet deep. 20 feet deep. So when they finish then they, they just miss the land. Stone, the, the stone and the uh, uh, land, the good soil, they missed all under the land. Meaning that you can't plant again on this you land for a very long time? Uh, you can't plant anything for a long time. Maybe it can take 20 years. Member of Parliament for Kade and a member of Parliament Agri Committee, Ohime Tinyase, says the situation is same in his constituency. Anytime I go around my constituency, I really, I'm really saddened by the fact that a lot of cocoa trees are going down and a lot of environmental degradation, such that the one's crop that was the livelihood of families in my constituency is definitely going to die. And livelihood might be very, very difficult for my people. I am concerned about cocoa being spoiled in the way that is being done. How severe is the situation in your area, for example? It is very, very critical. I, it, it's not gain saying, it's very critical. And I wouldn't be surprised that very soon we may not have a cocoa tree in my constituency because they are really, really destroying the forest base and all the farms and saying they are making money in terms of gold. But I feel cocoa has a long-term uh, gestation, a long-term existence. I know a cocoa tree will last about 40 years. But whatever we get from the minerals, it won't take us to that length if it is not well managed and the way it's being done. The effect of these destructive activities is yet to be fully felt. Over the last five years, cocoa production levels have been steady between 700 and 900,000 metric tons annually. But once the impact hits, the consequence on Ghana's economy will be devastating. Then all the benefits we get in cocoa production will go down. And revenues for rules, scholarships, for empl employment, and, and uh, even our international reputation as the producer of cocoa will all be lost to us. And that is very bad. If the trend becomes like this, it's a threat to the growth of our nation generally. Because we depend on cocoa for some of these things I have talked about with you, education, development, health, and so on. So it should be a concern. Coco Board says it is working to ensure Ghana gains the top spot as the world's largest cocoa grower with the 1 million tons annual target well in sight. But that will obviously not be possible unless these issues are fixed once and for all. That will not happen unless you stop choosing plastic and gold over cocoa. Coco Board PRO Noah Menya says they remain committed to protecting the country's cocoa fields. Yes. Uh, so what we do is, so where we know that this is happening, we talk to the chiefs because we know that the chiefs are holding the land in trust for the people. 
So we we'll talk to the chiefs, opinion leaders, and uh, maybe even farm, even the farmers themselves. We tell them, don't give your farm out to be cut for such a plantation because cocoa has has helped this country for a very long time. And so if we are cutting it down, you, we are depriving the country of the necessary revenues, which cannot compare to what rubber, for instance, is doing for the country. But because some, most of the farmers do not own the land, when the landowner decides to give out the, the land, the farmer is handicapped. He cannot do much. And the law does not also give Kokobo the authority to say that this land must be put into this use. And so all we can do is the advocacy, uh, which we keep doing, and then appealing to the farmers that instead they should go into cocoa cultivation rather than cut down the cocoa for either rubber or some are even uh, selling the land for uh, illegal mining and that sort of thing. What Cocoa Board currently is doing is to make cocoa farming attractive, lucrative, productive, and attractive. That is enhanced efficiency, which means that you can even double your uh, production. So given this <laughs> uh, you know, package of intervention which we are doing the farmers together with other agronomic practices like pruning and so on and so forth, we expect our farmers to be producing not less than 30 bucks per hectare, per pool. And I tell you, all those farmers who have given out their land for Galamsey, they are going to regret. If it's happened on a mass scale, you say that. But these are, uh, I mean, how many uh, acres has Grell taken over from cocoa to rubber? See, it is what I'm saying that you these issues you have to look at it in, in, in global terms as, as to what how many acres. We are talking of 1.7 million hectares of land under cocoa. And how many acres has grill has gone have now been turned into um, say lands or or to uh, uh, rubber or other other crops? So you need to get these things in perspective. And what is the impact on production? These questions about development, of uh, trying to improve the yields. If they succeed, they have far higher impact on output than these uh, reported cases of, I mean, rubber, what acreage do, uh, does rubber have in terms of the agricultural economy of Ghana? It's, it's, not, it's not much. Uh, from a very, very tiny base and uh, western region, parts of uh, uh, eastern region is where rubber is grown. It's growing, we know that, but you cannot compare it to the size of cocoa, which is a major, major activity for the economy of Ghana. Rubber is a major contributor to the Ghanaian economy. Obviously, the idea is not to demean its contribution. Industry watchers can only hope that Cocoa Board lives up to the assurances they are given. Because when the last cocoa tree dies, then Ghana's economy would lose the critical 2 billion US dollars that it gets from the cocoa port annually for economic development. And obviously, that threatens the availability of your favorite chocolate and the industry that produces it, as cocoa is the main ingredient for the production of that sweet confectionery. For Hotline, my name is Joseph Opokugakbo.